Okay, let's check out this Spark library now. Here it is. It's got two parts. The upper part is the current project. The bottom part is the actual library. Here's all the projects in your library in a list. You can scroll up and down with the mouse or with the arrow keys. Okay, you can look at this list of projects in your library by factory only, user only, or both. Okay, so you go down the list, choose a project, double click, it loads. Current project is now this one. Double click, load. Okay, now your upper view here might look like this, this CD view. Okay, forget that. Just choose your project from here, double click, load it, and then leave this in edit, like that, in this edit view. Okay, double click, load. So this is the current project, and this is its information. These are its banks and patterns, and, and this is its kit. If you click and highlight the number next to any instrument icon, you get all the information about the instrument at the bottom of the kit. Yeah. So the kit, patterns and banks, the information. Then down here is our list of projects in our library, in this in this scroll list now. We can double click to load these, but we don't have to load them. We just click once on them and they become highlighted and then we have access to their banks, patterns and kits over here. And just like with the currently loaded kit, I select any project here. This is its kit. And then I can click and highlight the number next to any instrument icon and I get all the information about that instrument under the kit. And now I've got access to this kit for this unloaded project. I can drag the individual instruments and drop them to any position I like in my current project kit like that command Z to undo command Z to undo choose a project have access to its kit drag and drop command Z to undo okay you can also transfer the whole kit from an unloaded project in your library into the current project so choose a project 808 drag the A icon drop it on the A icon up here above this current project kit, boom, it loads the whole kit. Command Z to undo. So we've got this transferability, we can transfer individual instruments or entire kits from unloaded projects in our library into the current project. And it's the same with banks and patterns. If I select a project here, this is all its banks and patterns. So I can transfer banks and patterns from unloaded projects in the library into the current project. So I select bank B. It's the selected and highlighted bank here in the current project. Doesn't matter which pattern is highlighted. Bank B. Choose a project. These are its banks and patterns. Choose bank C. Double click. It overwrites bank B up here. Double click B. It overwrites B up here, which is the selected bank. Okay. Same with patterns. If I choose A3, that's the currently selected pattern up here. Go down here, choose a project, choose C1, double click, it overwrites A3 up here. Okay, so we've got that ability to transfer things in from unloaded projects. Now, the current project up here, it can, um, it can export its patterns and banks. Okay, unloaded projects here can't, they can only import into the current project. But the current project up here, we can export its patterns. Okay, so you choose a pattern. A3, go to the export menu, export the selected pattern as a MIDI file. Title it, choose its location, save it. A3, still the selected pattern. Export as an audio file. Um, Spark pre names the audio file to the name of the project and the number of the pattern. You can change that, of course. It's always a WAV file, and you choose the location, save it. But we can also drag and drop from here which is by far the best method of exporting. Um, the preference for that is in the export menu here. Pattern drag and drop to MIDI file. That's ticked by default. Which means that when you drag a pattern, there's a MIDI file of that pattern. Drag off a bank, it creates a MIDI file of every single pattern in the bank. They're all in there. Okay, if you switch the export drag and drop preference to audio file then when I drag off a pattern Spark renders it on the fly and we now have a WAV file of pattern A1 which is the complete pattern playing all the instruments with all the effects, all the control moves, everything. And once the export drag and drop is set to this audio file mode 
I can even drag off a bank, just drag that bank off or any other and it will create an audio file of every pattern in that bank but I'm not going to do it on camera because it takes a while. So that's your export menu but there's one other thing if you've got a user project loaded, I'll load one now, you can export user projects, you cannot export factory projects. So now we've got a user project loaded, export menu here also includes project at the top, you can export the project. Uh, import. You can import MIDI files or X files. Okay. Um, if you do import a MIDI file and it's a GM MIDI file, make sure that up at the top area of Spark, yeah, in the preferences under MIDI Import Export, this bit here, choose Drum Map Model for MIDI Pattern Import. Make sure that's set to General MIDI. Then you can import your General MIDI file. Okay. You can import a Rex file as well. And it basically puts each slice of the Rex file onto a different instrument pad working up. And then we've got save and save as. Now, this is a user project. I can save it. Just click save. It asks me if I want to back up any audio files. I don't. Before I save it, or at any time, I can change its category here. Because it's a user project, I can change these things like the category. I can double click on the author field and type in who wrote it. Okay. And when I save, it, all these updated information gets saved. I can change the image as well. Or I can do Save As. Choose a new category there. Title it there. OK. If I've got a factory project loaded, Save doesn't work. I can't access the drop-down category. I can't retitle who wrote it. I can only do Save As. Choose a category. Retitle it. OK. All right. <coughs> and then uh, down here, in the library area, we've got three menu items. Import to library, you just click that, it opens up your disk browser dialog, you know, to find a project file. Okay, that only imports Spark project files. Um, you can set up a new project here, give it a category, title, okay. That then becomes the current project, you're ready to populate it with the instruments you want and begin to work on it. And finally, you've got this delete button here in the menu, but it only works if you've got a user project highlighted not factory projects. So user project, delete, and you have the option to delete any samples you may have backed up, custom samples, that you may have backed up when you created that project. Okay, and that's, that's your library. And uh, you might be thinking, well, what's the use of that? And what the power of the library is that it, f it took me a little bit of time to figure this out. That it's about that it c puts things into collections. Because you might think, well, here's the studio where I do all my editing of my instruments. So why can't I just set up my 909 bass drum here? Oh, wait, look at the list. Oh, and even where it does occur in, in lists, then or not all the 909 kicks are next door to each other. And then, you th then you'd have to do the same thing for the snare. And the same for the toms if you wanted to bring that. You know, it, this, when you are changing the instruments here, it's about the category not the collection it lives within. The library is about the collection. So if I want to start working with 909 sounds, I just go down the list to my 909 project, factory or user, because you can create your own, of course, using your own samples and whatever. I choose a 909 project here, and all the 909 drums are together. All the clean 909 drums ready to be imported all the dirty 909 drums ready to be imported. You know, it, it puts everything into collections. That's that's the power of it. And once you realise that, you can do things like here, I've, I've made a project called Club Kicks. And it's just all hard banging kicks. Every time I found one in another project, I imported it into this project. So now I have a collection of banging kicks. Anytime I want banging kicks, I just come here. And of course, once they're imported, they can be edited etc. So you can, you can create a, a project which is a compilation of any types of instruments you want, basses, whatever. But remember, a, a project also is about patterns and banks. We have access to those when we select them from the library to import into the current project. So a project could be just a collection of patterns without any instruments at all. You could have a project called House Beats, which is just all your best house beats. Any time you want, you can import them into the current project, use them as is, or modify them. You know, you could have a project called Transitions, which is just different roles that you've created with role effect instruments that might be going shh or things like that. You know, 
and you can use those to bring rolls into your current song and the effect instrument that causes that plus you know the pattern doing the roll the, the roll will just roll the instruments that are already in your kit but you can bring in the effect instrument by just dragging and dropping it that way you make sure you don't disturb your current kit you know yeah so it's about collections the library that's its power okay